Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is our second look at new Ryzen 4000 APUs. In our last video we covered the Ryzen 4 350G and today we're having a look at the Ryzen 4 650G. Now as we covered in the last video, these are identical to the 4 3000 and 4 6000 APUs, albeit it has some additional security protocols that are useful for business applications. The 4 3000, 4 6000 and 7000 are not available on the market but these Pro chips are available through third-party system integrators, primarily for business users, but it's not difficult to get hold of them. I managed to get mine for a third party last week. In terms of setting these up, again, as I covered in the last video, I was unable to run these on my B450 Pro M2 motherboard. There was no BIOS update available, but I was able to pull them into my, my MSI B550M Malta Wi-Fi. And by installing the new BIOSes and downloading the additional drivers, I was able to get this to boot through the motherboard. A bit of a noise, but not too much even for a non-tech head like myself. So in terms of specs, the 4650G is a 6-core 12-thread processor with a base clock of 3.7GHz and a boost of up to 4.2. It's almost identical to the 3600, although it doesn't offer PCIe Express 4 support. So here's how the 4650G stacks up against its predecessor, the Ryzen 5 3400G. As you can see, two more cores, four more threads, higher base and boost clock, and now the AMD Radeon 7 graphics with a slightly higher GPU frequency. Here's how the 4650G compares to the 3600. You see a slightly higher turbo clock, but I think that cache will make a big difference when it comes to testing. So here it is in the system. There's a CPU, all 12 threads. We have CPU Z running for the processor and the onboard graphics. As you can see on the GPU, I have allocated in the BIOS two gigabytes dedicated GPU memory as I did in the previous processor. Um, but the, the sharing works very, very well uh, in my experience. So moving on then to some benchmarks. So on Cinebench R20, we scored 3347 on the multiple core and 467 on the single. Obviously with six cores and 12 threads, far higher than both the 4350G and 3400G, both four core eight thread processors and just fractionally beaten by the 3600. Moving on into Geekbench 5, the 4650G scored a very creditable 64606, a single core of 1200. Again, smashing the 4350G and 3400G, but again, the Ryzen 3 3600 was faster. I think that additional cache probably makes a difference there. Okay, then moving on to some games testing. Again, just to reiterate, as I said in the last video, I use OBS to capture the video footage here, so it does have a significant impact on the frame rates you're seeing, but in terms of actual benchmarks, which were taken without OBS running, quite impressive. On Forza Horizon 4 on medium settings, we scored 41, a fraction higher than both the 4350G and 3400G. Not a huge step up in performance, obviously, on this one. Uh, again, on low, I also run that, and that was only a couple of frames per second quicker. Something about this particular benchmark, maybe, that, that doesn't allow a a significant difference to, to come out, but the gameplay was very, very smooth. Again, with racing games, I think, you know, anything above 30 FPS is, is absolutely fine and this looked great. Moving on to Fortnite then, um, a significant difference when it came to the benchmarking on this one. Just under 100 frames per second on normal settings, and the 4350G was there at 70 and the 3400G at 64, so a significant boost here with a 4650G. As we go through the benchmarks, you'll see a lot of the shooters did have a really significant leap up in frames per second, whereas some of the other games, the, uh, the racing games and, and other such games, didn't have such a significant increase. I'm not quite sure technically why that might be. Anyone got any ideas? Leave some comments below. Let us know why, why you think that might be the case. Okay, moving on then to Valorant. So it's 1080p high settings. It's a relatively straightforward game to run, actually, um, and unsurprisingly here, um, for 141 frames per second, significantly higher than both the 4350G and 3400G. And I let the graph go off just for effect. I could have obviously adjusted the scale, but really, I thought it was a bit more fun to do it that way. A really great gaming experience here. Um, would absolutely recommend running this on the 4650G. This was first class, um, although I'm Clearly crap at the game. 
Okay, GTA 5. Normal settings, 1080p. Sixty-nine frames per second, which is well over ten higher than both the four three fifty G and three four hundred G. Again, a significant jump in performance. Twelve and a half to fifteen percent increase there, which is pretty decent against the four three fifty G. Again, for this sort of game, anything above thirty FPS in ten eighty P looks fantastic. Um, but this plays really, really well. No real dips or significant glitches. So, a great game to run on this processor. Okay, CSGO. You all want to see CSGO? So the 4650G scored just under 110 frames per second. Again, significantly higher than both the 4350G and 3400G. A really large jump here on this one. Again, very much like Valorant, a really significant increase in FPS. And again, another quite simple game to run. So there's something there, I think, that the uh, the 4650 seems to have down pat in terms of these sort of easy to run esports games. Okay, Project Cars 2, another racer. This looked really good, played really well. Um, again, not a significant increase on the other processors. So 4650G, 53 frames per second. Well, again, the 4350G and the old 3400G were down at 43. Plays really smoothly. Again, this process handled it pretty well. Okay, then moving on. Overwatch, 1080p, medium settings. Again, absolutely fine playing this game on this. It's not going to quite give you, you know, 140 frames per second, but 103. Um, not a massive increase over the 4350G, but both really outperformed against the 3400G, so, so quite a significant increase in performance against the last generation of APUs. Graphics were decent, not very many lows, not really noticeable in gameplay. Um, and again, my crap gameplay aside, it did play really well. Rocket League, in here because I love it. Quite a creditable increase in performance on the 4650G here. Up at just over 100 frames per second, which is a significant leap on the 3400G. Not much more than the 4350G, but again, I think there's obviously something in the, the, the new Radiant graphics that suits some of these simple to run high FPS games. Certainly worth noting if you're primarily looking to play those on this sort of primarily looking to play those on a, a gaming machine. So I was unable to get Call of Duty Warzone to run on the 4350G. And I gave it another go on the 4650 and it just booted up fine, so I've, I've no idea what was wrong. I'll give it another go and see if I get it worked. So no benchmark here, but I have to admit, 1080p, it was a struggle. You weren't really hitting much over sort of 35 FPS. Obviously you're seeing it with OBS running, so it's barely hitting 30, um, but sort of 35 high 30s at best really. Um, I think to play this competitively online you'd have to go down to 720 I think. But this is the only game that the, the processor really struggled with. It really sort of found its match in this particular game. So again as I said in the last video I'll be putting together a special emulation video for both processors to see how they fare. Um, again this is with OBS running. But, but I managed to get Mario Kart 8 on CMU running at 1440p at 60 frames per second, almost flawlessly. Um, Super Mario World as well, run flawlessly at 1440p. As ever, we did have a, a problem, as we always do, with, with the Citra emulator, which doesn't like Vulcan at all, and 
the Radeon Graphics Sutton like OpenGL. Um, otherwise, under the sort of testing I've done so far as an emulating machine, this works really well. So then, some final thoughts on, on both these processes, I think. Um, I mean, they're, they're both excellent. As we said in the last video, these aren't meant to replace gaming machines per se. They're never going to outstrip a, a processor and a half-decent GPU. Even a sort of 3100 with a 1650 Super, which we've got in my 500 pound build the other month, is going to absolutely smash this processor. As a standalone processor, it clearly both of them can clearly handle 1080p really well. Obviously the 4650G has got a bit of a leap up on some games. Whether it's worth the additional money, it's very difficult to tell until we get the proper consumer price. Closer to 4650G is in price, so the 3600 makes it a very tidy option. It's pretty much the same processor. Uh, with the inbuilt graphics, would be a no-brainer. They're clearly a big step up. If you get this for $150, $150, I mean, you'd be able to put a, a machine together for around $400. Um, compared to, you know, 500 for anything really with a half decent modern processor and a, a 1650 Super, so the GPU version is 25% more expensive. So let, let's see. I mean, I think if at 150, 160, I think this is a, a chip worth having a look at. And if, if you're in the market for something from occasional gaming, and if you're not after a gaming rig per se, just a processor that can play games occasionally, this is the perfect solution, I think. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's the emulation video will be coming up soon, so do consider subscribing. We do a this channel is primarily gaming emulation as well. We do a monthly old parts build and a monthly new parts build, so do consider subscribing. Notifications if you like. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was useful. Until the next one, go well.